On the 7th of August in 2016, a young humpback whale beached itself at the ferry terminal in West Seattle. Uh, a friend of mine was getting off the ferry and saw it and called me uh, right away, so I drove over there as quickly as I could. When I got there, the area was taped off to keep people away from the whale. Uh, the researchers were taking tissue samples and data. Uh, they said it was about two years old. One of them said the humpbacks were actually doing very well and their population has been increasing. It didn't have any obvious injuries, but it was really underweight. Uh, I asked one of the researchers if I could get some samples of the parasites from my teaching collection, and uh, they said I couldn't do it myself, but uh, she offered to do it for me, which was very kind. These parasites are whale lice, the uh, species name Siamis bupus. They're only found on humpback whales. The large numbers of them suggest that the animal had been ill for quite a while and wasn't able to knock the lice off like they usually do by jumping out of the water, breaching. You can see here various sizes and colors uh, mixed together in large patches and these have caused damage to the whale's skin. The barnacles, Coronula diadema, are also species-specific parasites of humpback whales. Uh, the researcher said that she couldn't collect any of them for me because they'd have a little bit of whale tissue stuck to the bottom and that wouldn't be legal for me to have without a permit. The parasites tend to gather in folds and crevices in the whale's skin. Here, some are gathered around the nostrils. So when the tide came back in, they hauled it out to the middle of the Puget Sound and sunk it in 400 feet of water. Uh, one of them told me that that cost about $10,000 to do that. Now, these uh, are interesting. They have elongated appendages sort of going up and these are attached where the legs are attached so they seem to be some kind of modified leg although they're not obviously used as a leg because they don't have uh, any of the claws on the end or anything and they're much softer uh, it's almost like there's some sort of sensory apparatus uh, some of the arachnids have modified legs amblypigids and uropigids which are used as antennas. You can see these are quite flexible, uh, whereas the legs are not. Legs are very sturdy. Uh, not surprising when you think that these have to remain attached to a whale for their entire life. Uh, you can see that the tips of the uh, claws are very sharp claw on the end for grasping onto the whale. Uh, these are amphipods. So these, the amphipods are the group of the, what they call them, um, uh, you know, beach hoppers, beach fleas, those little things you see hopping around in, in seaweed. But uh, these are highly modified parasitic versions. In order to preserve these, the body is pretty sturdy. So usually um, they can just be, you know, pinned and dried. A lot of bugs, arthropods. Uh, but these soft uh, antenna legs, let's call them, I'm not sure what they are, those seem to be a bit more flexible. I'm afraid if I just pinned this up like a beetle or something that these soft appendages would dry and curl up. And I would really like to preserve those as a feature. I was hoping that as these warmed up a little bit, I could get them to move, uh, but none of these are moving. So they they seem rigid and stiff, like they're they still have some vigor to them. But it's possible that they've died. I've had these in the refrigerator for a couple of days. I've just been too busy to get around to uh, shooting some video of them. Uh, when I first got them, they were all sort of clumped together grabbing onto each other. On the chance that they are uh, still alive, before I put them into a solvent, I'm going to put them in the freezer for a couple of hours and freeze them, which should kill them if they're still alive. Now these specimens have been frozen and thawed, so I'm certain that they're dead. Uh, there's quite a bit of color variation here, and I would like to try and preserve some of this color. So this is isopropyl alcohol. Um, having some water in the alcohol reduces the drying effect.
Uh, so I'm going to put this one into the isopropyl and it's possible that those appendages will rehydrate a little bit. Uh, but I, ha I did put some of the fresh specimens into isopropyl alcohol a little earlier and they seem to be not affected. Uh, it will preserve them, kill the bacteria and draw some of the water out, but it didn't shrink up the appendages. So uh, I think I'm just going to put um, a couple more of these in here and see how they react. Yeah, and then we'll just wait and see what happens. Now, looking at some of these specimens, some of the smaller ones, I actually did find a female. Um, let's see if I can get this where we... There we go. Uh, now, this is the underside of the specimen, and you can see here are some flaps right here, which cover the area that would hold the eggs. It's sort of like a brood pouch if you will, right there. It's kind of like, it looks like there's four of them. I haven't looked at them with a microscope, but it looks like there's four flaps that kind of cover up the uh, the underside of the specimen, and that's where they would hold their eggs to keep them from being swept away. If you can imagine spending your whole life riding around on the outside of a humpback whale, that's got to be a pretty exciting life, and uh, you wonder how they can you know, breed and move around and reproduce and make babies and how can they could do all that when they're having that kind of a dynamic existence. It's it's pretty mind-blowing. Uh, I can see it under the microscope but it's hard to see with the camera like this. There's actually little round eggs in there. Yeah, there's one right there. Little round eggs held in this brood pouch which you can imagine this thing stuck to a humpback whale riding around with all that water and current and the whale breaching and jumping out of the water how are they going to contain their eggs? They're going to have to hold them and then when they hatch these tiny little nymphs little tiny whale lice are going to have to emerge from this pouch and somehow grasp onto the whale and the size of those eggs, I mean they're about the size of the tip of this pin so those nymphs are going to be really tiny uh, so this is one of the males. It's, I'd say, twice the size, easily. Which kind of surprises me. Often in arthropods, the females are larger because they need to uh, produce the eggs. Uh, when we see larger males in a lot of species, not just arthropods, it usually means there's competition. Like the males are competing with each other uh, over the females, so there's some advantage to being larger. Now these have been in the freezer for a couple of months and you can see that they have freeze-dried. Uh, most of the moisture, all the moisture has gone out of them and so they should uh, be able to, I should be able to pin and dry them and they should turn out pretty good. Uh, one of the reasons I did this was these soft appendages here on the sides uh, would tend to shrivel up as in this one they shriveled up quite a bit. But in some of them, they came out quite nice. They were, diff you know, as a soft body part, they were freeze dried, and that allowed them to come out nice. And then I um, just put a little bit of water on them to soften them up slightly, and was able to pin them to get all of the legs in a position that I'd like, get them nice and straight. So these should only take oh, like an hour or so to dry out, and then we'll see how how they look. There were a couple of these uh, in different colors. Um, this one's dark brown, darker brown with the white edges uh, on the legs. And these other ones were kind of yellowish white and some various other colors. So I thought I would pin uh, one of the darker colored ones as well just so you could see the variation. between the set of legs just behind. And then I'll just use some pins to space these legs out a little bit. Things spinning around, so I'll anchor it at the base. Get the front end lifted up a little bit. I just want to move these off to the side a little bit. As you can see, I still haven't figured out what these things are, these soft appendages. 
They're modified legs of some kind. But I don't know what the function is. I'm sure I can find out. I have to ask my expert. And then let this claw over just a little bit. Yeah. yeah, that looks pretty good. I also have a couple of females, which are quite a bit smaller. Now these I did not freeze dry. These were just in alcohol. Uh, and I'm going to see how they come out once I pin them up. And here are the females. Uh, I, I pinned one of them upside down so that you could see those little egg holding uh, features and then one right side up. Uh, since these specimens are being used for a teaching collection, uh, one of the things that I can do when there's uh, very fine sort of structural details on these skinny little legs and appendages. If I put that over uh, a label, the data label, uh, it does make it a little hard to see the details. So you can use a, a, a card as a platform just to make it easier to see uh, the features. And this is uh, uh, a little piece of paper here that, uh, art paper, uh, good quality paper and this kind of neutral beige tone here will you can see really shows off the legs and appendages much better than um, a piece of paper with a bunch of a little writing on it so I'm going to use this as a platform to make it look better also uh, now that these are dry uh, there's a kind of a scaly whitish uh, coating on the legs and on the body that's just, I think, an artifact of how this is dried out. And I'm going to uh, spray this with uh, polyurethane, uh, a flat uh, finish polyurethane. And I think that this will uh, make it look much more natural like it did um, when it was still alive. Uh, you can really see it on the dark colored specimen. Um, the, end, the tips of the legs are white which is kind of interesting, but up here on the body and on the uh, four legs, there's kind of a scaly white uh, coating on there. So I'm going to um, just hold this specimen with the tweezers like this and just spray some uh, polyurethane on, and I think that will um, even out that discoloration. Now, you typically wouldn't do that for just a purely research specimen, but since this is a teaching collection and I want people to be able to see them uh, just looking at the uh, specimens in a box, using these platforms and um, treating the surface of them, I think will make it a much better specimen. So these do look quite a bit better since I sprayed them with polyurethane. I think that was a good move. Now, the next step is to put the pin through this card, this platform, and looking at the location of the pin and where I want the specimen to sit, put it right through the center. I think I'm going to put it right about there. And now I'll look and see if that's really placed the way I want it. Mm. Yeah, I think that's, that's pretty good, actually. Yeah, you can see that that colored card really helps show off the specimen. It's a little bit low. I think I can raise it slightly and it'll be uh, a little better. Try it again, slightly higher. Pins a little thin. There we go. Get it nice and straight. Yes, that's good. You can see that that shows off the legs and features much better. Yeah, that's good. And now I'll use the data label. And the data label has locality, Washington, the state, King County, 
7th of August, 2016. Uh, I have a notation here on humpback whale, so we know where it came from. The species name, Cy Cyamus bupus, uh, the male symbol, and then uh, Don Elon, the collection. So I'll put the specimen on the data label. There. And here is the final result. The lighter colored one. Really looks quite good. And then uh, dark colored male. And uh, I have the much smaller female here of the Cyanus bupus. And uh, this is the species that is found on the gray whale, Cyamus uh, scamoni. And you can see the body's much more robust, shorter legs. Uh, so each of these species of parasite is found only on a particular species of whale. And that's an example of coevolution. They had some common ancestor, but being isolated, being on only a particular species of whale, over time they evolved into different species. My friend at Portland State took this great uh, microscope photo of the underside of a male specimen. I did find a reference uh, in a book to this genus Siamis as having tubular gills. So I'm sure that's what these structures are. They're highly modified legs that have become gills.